Hey, so why does speech sound so musical? Today we're going to talk about pitch. You might also think about it as tone or intonation. It's the way my voice sounds. That part of language. We're going to talk about that today. So what is pitch? So speech is created when air leaves your nose or your mouth. That's the prerequisite for talking. Um, most of the time, your vocal folds are moving to add what's called voice to that airflow. And when I say most of the time, when you have sounds like s, sh, f, my vocal cords are not doing anything, so that's unvoiced. Your voice is a sound wave with a pitch, which is measured in frequency, which is um, hertz is the metric system measurement for frequency. So you remember a wave frequency is how many waves happen per second. And don't worry about the physics. The idea is that your voice is a wave with pitch. You're chopping up air particles to make sound waves. And your voice can move up or to a higher frequency, a higher pitch, or it can move down to a lower frequency, lower pitch. So I go up and down. So I'm going to show you what's actually happening in the mouth um, or in the throat when you're vocalizing. This is the video of a singer, and they put a camera into her larynx, and we see these little white things here are actually the vocal folds. Now, this is the top of your trachea. You open these folds when you bring in a nice big breath of air, right? And then um, when they come together the, to vibrate and make voice. And if you're a man, you have a big Adam's apple, you can, your vocal cords are gonna be right behind your Adam's apple, right? And if you're a woman and you don't, you can't really see your Adam's apple that obviously, if you trace down like this, you'll kind of find it here. And once again, this, this is what we're looking at right here. So imagine the camera goes into my mouth and is showing me the inside. Oh, and this is what we're looking at here. I'll watch this video. So you see these little pieces of membrane are kind of uh, vibrating and the air is coming out. You notice on her inhale, it's like, it opens up. And then when she makes the musical note, it kind of undulates like this. And um, when it's a high frequency, it stretches. When it's a low frequency, it's closed. You don't need to know this to speak it, but it's kind of cool to know what's actually going on. Remind yourself that when we're speaking a language like Spanish or English, it's not magic. There's physical movements occurring in your mouth. What I always say is language is just sound and movement. So, what is pitch? Well, we already learned about syllables. Think of speech as a sequence of syllables, right? Uh, but these syllables are existing on another dimension as well of this pitch that's going up and down. So, we can think of these syllables moving up. So, in between syllables, um, there's a movement. So, I can go, you know, hey, what's up, do you? What are you doing, right? So same, same, up, down, down. So that movement from one syllable to the next, that inter-syllable pitch movement, um, but is also within the actual syllables, you can have a uh, movement of pitch. So I can say uh, like a monotone syllable like that, or my voice can go up like, what? What? So watch just one syllable, but I go, what? So within one syllable, I can make a movement. And within, oh, or I can go down. Hey, 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 what? Hey, man, man. So those are the three types of pitch movement within, inside a syllable. Same as before, I can have a flat, rising, or falling. And there's other things you can do as well, kind of going down and coming back up again, but that doesn't really happen in Spanish. This is relevant in tonal languages like Chinese or Vietnamese, but not Spanish. Um, finally, the third level of pitch analysis we can look at is pitch movement across a phrase. So you'll notice that Spanish will have certain patterns like and 
And you'll, so in this module, we're going to be looking at different Spanish phrase patterns and developing your ability to intuitively lock in to each of these phrasal patterns. Because when you're speaking, you're not speaking syllable by syllable, you're speaking the whole melody, the whole pattern of the sentence. So those are the three levels you can look at um, in between the syllables and then inside of a syllable and then the overarching pattern across a phrase. So one question you might ask is what does pitch signify? So pitch frequency is the signal, like we said before, and you can take out a significance from the signal. So what does it signify? Um, so pitch is a big part of stress. It might even be the biggest part of stress when we say, for example, esta and esta, right? Um, there will be loudness considerations and length considerations to distinguish the stressed syllable in either of these words, but a major one will be what's the pitch doing? So when I say esta, notice how the esta, I'm going ah, and the pitch is starting at a higher pitch and it's falling. Ah, ah. So we're going up in between syllables and then within that syllable, that rectangle is tilting down as a falling. Esta, right? And that's how we know that ta is the stressed syllable and we're saying esta, which is to be, versus esta, esta. We're starting at a higher pitch, esta. So you'll notice higher pitch typically means uh, stress, right? Um, it can also just be an emphasis. So in the case of esta and esta, those are two different words. But you can be speaking a sentence, and for example, in English, I want you to pay attention to this phrase versus I want you to pay, pay attention to this phrase, or I want you to pay attention to this phrase. So each of these things, I'm emphasizing a different word in a sentence, and I'm using pitch as a way to do that emphasis. Um, and then you also have mood, like uh, question. So I can say um, in Spanish, um, you know, esta cosa es tuya, this thing is yours. So I can say to you in a statement, esta cosa es tuya. Or I can say, is this yours? Esta cosa es tuya. And then it's the exact same words, exact same syllables and phonemes, but the difference is that the intonation pattern, the phrasal pattern is different. And that's how you know that I'm asking a question versus telling a statement. And it can also shift based on, you know, I'm making a command. Esta cosa es tuya, you know, uh, or being doubtful or sarcastic, ironic. All these other layers kind of are determined by the pitch level, phrase level of the pitch over, overall. So finally, as well, uh, pitch will be something that distinguishes different accents to a degree. So you ever hear like, oh, people say, well, oh yeah, in that, you know, in Colombia or in Mexico, you know, people from DFA, Mexico City, um, speak more sing-songy. What they're talking about is the way their pitch moves compared to other accents. So these are things which pitch would kind of tell you about within a sentence. But remember, it doesn't need to signify to be significant. Okay, so remember before we said every detail matters in terms of shaping your expectation frame. So you don't have to ask the question, well, how is this going to directly serve me in terms of meaning? It doesn't matter. You want to be able to mimic pitch as closely in detail as possible to what the native speaker you're mimicking does. Okay, so a lot of people are, when they find out about the mimic method philosophy and are focused on pronunciation and sound and audio, um, they'll say, oh, but I have a bad ear. You know, I'm tone deaf. What if I'm tone deaf and I'm not good at this stuff? And the whole point of these courses, of course, is to help you improve your ear and improve your, your hearing ability. Um, but I want to clear up a misconception about this tone deafness idea. So there's an actual condition. It's called congenital amusia. And it's, uh, it affects less than 4% of the population. And this is what technically tone deafness means. What it means is that you can't hear the difference between pitches and music. So if I say la and la, some people just can't hear the difference. And I assume at least 96 out of 100 of you can hear that those are two different pitches, just intuitively without even having to study music or anything. You just kind of know because um, you're surrounded by music your whole life and these things usually kind of emerge. But for some people, they actually have a tone deafness where these differences don't really show up to them. It's sort of like color blindness uh, for your ears. Like you, you can see most things, but for some reason, this doesn't kind of show to you. Um, but interesting enough, it doesn't affect the ability for these people to hear pitch-related meaning. So it's not as if 
when they're speaking to someone, they don't know if they're asking a question or if they're giving a command or making a statement. So it seems to be centered mostly on music. And what I find interesting is that, because I, I asked a long time ago, I'm like, well, when I learned Chinese, tone is very important in Chinese. Um, do they have tone deafness there? And it turns out that there's a strong correlation that in the country or a population where they speak a more tonal language, and by the way, what tonal language means, all languages are tonal. What tonal means is that within the syllable and um, you know, at all, all three levels of analysis, more information is encoded in pitch. Uh, so, you know, you know what, what we're saying is that be, because I'm saying this pitch pattern differently, I'm saying a completely different word, a completely different phrase, which doesn't happen in Spanish or English. Uh, in those places, congenital amusia is way lower, um, which suggests that the environment shapes this, which means you can train it as a skill. So even if you are technically tone deaf, which you probably are not, and you should probably stop saying that, you know, out of respect for people who do have this condition, if you are technically tone deaf, you can still train the ability. And there's been research to show that. And that's the whole point of this course. It's just that you're not good at anything you don't practice. So you shouldn't be surprised if you don't get something good the first try. You just have to do the things one by one. So which brings us to the question then, how do you train pitch perception and your ability to lock in and, and match and feel the tones? Um, same as always, filtering and imprinting. We're going to filter the sound to focus on a specific level of pitch. Uh, between a syllable, inside a syllable, what phrase, each lesson in this module is going to focus on one of those levels. Um, we also add in a special audio file now, which will um, take a phrase like, hola, como estas? And then we slow it down for you like always, hola, como estas? And then we run a filter on it that gets rid of the um, extra articulation um, elemental sound data. So you don't hear the l, k, you just hear, so it goes, hola, como estas? And then it goes, womp, 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 womp. And that allows you to focus more on the tone. So that'll be very useful for you. And then once again, you imprint it. So it's over and over again, you wanna mimic it yourself so you can integrate it into your mind and start to notice these little nuances and details. Um, and then we start with the simplest micro skills and gradually build your way up. So you start with the first one, maybe you don't get the first try, but you keep doing practice sessions, and then you're like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to hear it. Uh, and then you build up to the next skill. Each skill builds on top of the next one. So just like everything else, you just have to practice it. And by the end of it, your ear will be completely different. You'll be more tuned into the Spanish signal on terms of the actual pitch. And once again, go out afterwards, listen to Spanish in conversation, you'll start to notice more. And if you already know Spanish or a couple of words, they'll start to appear to you and emerge. The significance will start to emerge to you more clearly. So to review, pitch refers to the frequency of the sounds created by your vocal cords. Pitch can move up, move down, or stay the same between syllables, inside syllables, and at the level of phrase melody. In Spanish, the meaning of the phrase can change when you change the pitch, so it's important. And pitch is trainable through the process of filtering, imprinting, and mimicking. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this lesson. What we're gonna do for this um, first lesson is to prove to you that you're not tone deaf, I'm gonna give you a very simple practice session using musical notes, use musical instruments, and we're gonna ask you, does the pitch go up, does it go down? Are these two pitches even the same? And you'll know that if you can answer that properly, that you're not tone deaf. So I hope you have fun with that, and as always, let us know if you have any questions.